All right, so before we get started, just had a quick funny story. It has nothing to do with football, but um, Y2K virus apparently was lying dormant for 20 years and hit my phone yesterday. Um, I guess that zero really does matter because my phone started going crazy. Um, all the text I was getting, it started saying that it was from like the year 2000. And so usually my phone tells me how old the text is, like five minutes, an hour, two days, whatever. It was like 19 years. And I'm like, what? And so I couldn't see the text because they were so backlogged and they were stored under the year 2000. And uh, my alarms kept going off. The uh, clock on my phone was wrong. And it was just it, my phone was straight tweaking. And I was just laughing because I was like, man, this is what we were afraid of in Y2K, like as soon as that zero hits, it's going to mess up all these systems. And it was just funny to see my phone actually tweak out like that. And it updated and it's fine now, but I just thought that was funny. But, you know, that's what happens when you got Walmart phones and stuff. So uh, anyway, also, before we start, I uh, want to talk about yesterday um, and just kind of circle back. I posed a very simple question, not easy to answer, but simple question. Uh, given the information that we basically had the same offensive uh, philosophies last year. What do you contribute this year's uh, failure to on offense? And people did exactly what I said that would do. They start adding context that you can't even really prove. And so because we saw the timeline of how it worked, and I talked about it yesterday, about, well, this play calling is bad, okay, well, it, we, he must have changed the play calling because Trubisky hasn't been playing well. Go back to week one. No, he's been doing this all year. Oh, well, he must have changed the play calling from last year because he saw how bad Trubisky looked in the offseason. Go back to last year. No, they were calling it last year. So what do you say now? And um, I saw hearing all types of stuff. People got all types of reasons. It was just like, you know, Oh, we got lucky. I'm like, oh, we got lucky throughout a whole season, offense and defense. People are like, yeah, we got lucky. We we were a one year wonder. Okay. Um, then I had people, a lot of people, my favorite. I always thought Matt Nagy sucked. I was like, oh, so you were saying he was bad last year on his way to coach of the year. You were out here shouting against him. Yeah, I was. Okay. I highly doubt it. Um, but then I'm like, okay, so you saying he couldn't coach last year. And then people, the defense won them coach of the year. I'm like, oh, that's weird because when I was saying coach of the year isn't really about the best coaching job. It's a glorified off record. A lot of people had a backlash. Are you stupid? Are you serious? It has nothing to do with the record. Da, da, da. And I'm like, OK. But now we're saying the defense won him coach of the year. OK. Then we got people um, saying, uh, you know, we had better execution last year. Which you could say, I mean, yeah, technically that's how football works. But then the question is, again, if we had better execution to the point where we were uh, competent, then why all of a sudden are we saying that nobody on this team can coach or play football? <laughs> Obviously they can. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And then we have people saying, well, the offense sucked last year, too. Oh, really? I'm like, we're comparing this offense to last year's offense? And I'm like, so if we sucked last year, how come there was no uh, fire Matt Nagy last year when he was winning coach of the year? How come there was no fire him as the play caller? Get a new OC. How come there was no um, trade all the offensive line? How come when Charles Leno made the Pro Bowl, I had so many people clapping when I'm like, what, how, why is he in the Pro Bowl? If there, if we suck so bad last year, hmm. Okay, so anyway, people start adding a lot of context, and so it was just interesting. I mean, it played out the way we kind of talked about. So anyway, today we hear about Juan Castillo. Um, so all the reports are that we are going to bring in Juan Castillo as the offensive line coach. Now it's probably ninety five percent true. So many people report it, but until the Bears announce him and all that, it's not officially confirmed but you know we're gonna still talk about it so 
in my mind, I don't know exactly how it went down. Of course, I'm not there. But in my mind, looking at uh, the quickness and where he comes from, my educated guess is that Matt Nagy called up his boy Andy Reid or someone from the Andy Reid tree and was like, hey, is there you got a guy for me that can do O-line um, that's either going to be available after the season or that hasn't coached this year or whatever. And they gave him the name and he made the call or maybe he had a close relationship with him and he called him himself and said, hey, we want you to come in and do the O-line. So that's what I would say happened um, based off how quickly it happened. And so if you look at his pedigree, obviously he's from the Andy Reid tree. He's bumped elbows with Nagy at some point. Um, and that's what it's going to be. Now, does it matter that much? No, absolutely not. Um, I already talked about the scapegoat firings from the O-line coach and the OC and all that. Look, the mastermind, if you will, is still in the building. Um, people talk about, you know, how does it shake out when you got a coach that's more offense or more defense? And it's different for every team. But usually you're going to have that head coach be more involved with the side that they have expertise in, especially when you have a setup like ours where we took the McVay route. And Nagy does nothing with defense. Uh, everything is ran through Pagano. And so, of course, Nagy has his hands on everything offense. They say he's going to still call the plays, all that. So all these hirings don't matter that much. Now, some people are going to say, OK, um, he stand and Helfrich were the run game coordinator. And I didn't really get to look at their titles before they removed them. Um, but. Uh, even if that's true, I don't know if they were or not. Even if that's true, people are saying, hey, this Juan Castillo guy has uh, experience as a run game coordinator and our run game was so bad. That's what we need. OK, number one, uh, <laughs> he had two years as official run game coordinator capacity uh, as far as it is the way it's listed. And so they didn't last that long. It was uh, one year and done, one year and done. Um, and so there's that, but also on top of that, it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> this, if we're talking about high school, college, yeah, the run game, uh, could matter a whole lot as far as the coordinator. But when you're talking about the NFL, just understand there's nothing new under the sun. Everybody, you know, goes crazy about the new trend. And I'm like, look, it all comes back around. Oh my God. No, it's a passing league. There's never going to be power run. And then, the Patriots power ran themselves to a Super Bowl last year. And so everything goes around in a cycle. There's nothing new under the sun. And so as far as a run game coordinator, A, as offensive line coach, it's your job to teach the offensive line what you want to execute. That's, that's his job either way. But then as a run game coordinator, it's really just your job to game plan for the run. So I did a video on game plan and check that out uh, if you want to understand more. But really, you're just breaking half of that responsibility up and giving it to just the run game. And so that's it. I mean, OK, I, I don't I mean, there are some things you might be better at recognizing as far as a game planner. I'm not saying it's not, but as far as there was like the play design of our runs. And like some, we done some things that was weird and I have to imagine it was a missed assignment. But other than that, we just run regular runs. There's nothing in the NFL that people haven't seen. And so I've done the run game film sessions. And what do we run? A lot of inside zone. Every NFL team runs inside zone. Every single uh, college team runs inside zone. That's nothing new. Everybody knows what that is. What else do we run? A little power G. Every NFL team runs power G. At this point, every college team runs power G out of the shotgun because um, that's now popular again. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much because now it's all two back. We ain't going to get into that. And so, like, we run runs that everybody does. I mean, there's, there's no team running these crazy mind-blowing innovative concepts on the run game like no every run you can think of the defense has seen it guaranteed and so when it comes to game day in the nfl 
is 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 little about the X's and O's and all about the Jimmys and Joes, as they say. And so um coaching definitely plays a big part prior to the game. Uh play calling to an extent can play a big part in uh situational moments, uh time management and all that. But at the end of the day, it's about execution. Just like everybody was telling me last year about our offense. It's about execution. And so guess what? It doesn't matter what you draw up. If you got guys that aren't talented, that aren't built to move people off the ball, guess what? When you run power, you're not going anywhere. It's just that simple. Um, And so people are talking about, and, and again, this is, just the run plays. Now, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to act like I know how they're going to set it up, but I would imagine it's just the types of runs they want to do. It's not like he gets to call the formations and all that. But even if you did, because everybody's so up in arms about this I formation, guess what? If you kept running the I formation regularly, it was going to get stopped. That And they were going to make you do something else. That's just how that was going to go. So, yes, we brought it out every now and then. And look, I like the downhill stuff. Instead of shotgun, it's not as downhill. Um, that's why I like pistol over shotgun sometimes. Um, but I like the under center because it's more downhill. That doesn't change anything for the offensive line. When you run a uh, power block, you can come downhill if it's shotgun or not. But for the running back, it gives them more of a head of steam. So I like that. I understand that part. But if there's no magic cure. The I formation isn't going to magically just make you better. Guess what? Teams were going to stop it. And so it's all about execution. And so if you trot out the same five guys and you try to run some different schemes that fit better to them, yes, that's one thing that might help. If your running back is better, because that was the other thing. I'm like, it's the same O-line. Y'all talking about they can't block. It's the same O-line as we were, uh, you know, had a run game uh, last year, more so than this year. And, oh, Jordan Howard, that must be the key because everybody's trying to look at what's the uh, variables and, you know, what's the uh, consistency. Up oh, must have been Jordan Howard. So now after you was telling me how great Montgomery was when I was telling you his vision wasn't great, now all of a sudden you're telling me Jordan Howard was the uh, key. So anyway, the point is um, it's not going to mean much in my opinion. So, uh and if you bring in the same players and so that's just what i i feel and so i i guess people might be excited about it they might not be whatever look do i think harry he is less of a coach as juan castillo when one was putting out premium i'm talking premium blockers into the nfl draft and one didn't have a job this year i don't know um, I don't know them personally, but do I think it's going to make a huge difference that we have a new O-line coach? Absolutely not. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Go to the comment section. Let me know. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And remember, stay up and bear down.